Well, hi, hi. Uh, thanks, Charmaine, and and thanks for all the uh, all, all the team at the Digital Expo for pulling this together. Um, I have to say, it's a, it looks like it's a very impressive uh, exhibition. So, thank you for that. Um, so, hi, everybody. My name's Tim. Tim Holmes, and. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about grants and funding, um, and more specifically, how to find grants and funding for your business without the fear of, of missing out. So this talk is, is really relevant to those in the UK, uh, not so relevant for anybody who's watching abroad, so uh, do apologise about that, but it is very much UK, UK based. I understand that if you're watching on Zoom, you can interact, but on YouTube, you, you, you can't. So I plan to talk for around 20 to 30 minutes, leaving some time for, for Q&A so we're not too pushed on time. Um, if, you, uh, if you are on Zoom and you want to, to interact, interact, then absolutely fine. If you are on um, any, any other method of, of um, communication. I, I understand YouTube is, is you, people are watching it on YouTube. You can send an email through uh, my email address, timagrowthinbusiness.com, and I'd be happy to uh, to answer. I've got I've got the email set up to to one side, so um, I can always do that. Um, so after, if you'd like to contact me, you're, you're more than welcome to. Here are all my my um, my contact details. Uh, it's Company is called Growth and Business Limited. Website, the main website is growthandbusiness.com, uh, uh, which will outline all the services we offer. Grantsandfunding.co.uk, which um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and my Calendly link, uh, growthin.biz Calendly, which so if you'd like to book any time to have a chat through your business and grants specifically for your business, I'm very happy to do so. And obviously my email and phone number. Um, and I'm going to use slides, uh, basically because I don't trust my IT skills and I imagine things might start to go wrong. So I'm going to play it safe and, and just talk to you uh, with, with, with just a background on. Um, and finally, I'd just like to say before we, we get started, I, I don't have all the answers, uh, but if, if you do ask, ask a question I can't answer, I'll, I will be happy to go out go and find the answer, um, let you know what it is. And, and to be honest with you, for, for me, that's just the way I, I believe we all learn. So I'm always happy to go and do some background work and, uh, and come back to you. So let's get, get started. So quick question really to everyone. Have you ever wanted to find out what grants and funding are available for your business or you just don't know where to start? So if that's you, I'm going to show you how you can do this relatively easily. Find out a lot of what's out there without having to worry about missing out for your business. So, so many times we will get a, an inquiry from a potential client um, where they've either invested in some form of a project um, and then it's retrospectively too late to claim a grant. They the fund that they want to apply for has closed so they've actually missed the deadline um, and or it's too close to the the fund deadline to actually put a meaningful application together um, sometimes it's not really the application form it's the fact that you you need a lot of, of, of supporting documentation to go with it and, and, and quite often we find businesses just don't have that uh, don't have that documentation in place. And that quite often takes longer than the, the application itself. So I'll explain later how you can do all this, cover a great deal of what is available for, for businesses. Um, hopefully you, you won't miss out again. Um, and you can align your plans to take advantage of, of, of what help and assistance is out there. So by the end of this session, you'll be more attuned to what is available um, you know where to look, and hopefully you won't miss out. At the end, I'll explain about this, this grants and funding.co.uk. Um, and then you can decide how we can continue our, our journey together. And hopefully you'll be able to move your business forward in a far more financially efficient manner and avoid the mistakes that a lot of business owners make 
by not being aware of what financial advice is out there for them. As said by American politician Donald Rumsfeld, you don't know what you don't know. And if you can add another phrase to that, you don't know what you don't know, and sometimes until it's too late. Hence these people that come to us and the uh, and we can't apply for, for any sort of grant for them. So again, an, another important question, does what I'm actually going to share with you actually work? Well, I have three examples that we can give. Um, one was back September, October last year during the, the height of all the lockdowns in, in the UK. Our manufacturing company in Birmingham, we, we, we got £40,000 to pivot their business. So it enabled them to buy some new machinery and to new markets. Um, we're still going with that today. Property company in the West Midlands, uh, they had quite a large um, property, commercial property, elements of it were, were derelict. Um, so we got £185,000 to bring that back to, to a working condition that, that generated jobs. And, um, and, it, and it brought which what, what was derelict commercial space back into to usage. Um, commercial venue in Coventry, we got them £78,000 uh, to offset against the impact of their their struggles through lockdown, um, and I haven't heard since, but presuming they're still they're open now and, 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 and trade is going well. So all of these are clients that use our services, and that's over £300,000 of money we raised just for these three clients alone. I suppose you ask the question, why? Because we alerted them to the opportunity, but they could have done it themselves, and when we totally accept that, Possibly they didn't because they just didn't know where to look or they didn't have the time to do it. Uh, and I know in some cases they were just wrapped up with, with what was going on at the time in their, in their business. So who am I? Um, my name's Tim Holmes. I'm a owner of multiple businesses and founder of Growth in Business. We're now becoming the place to go for information on grants and funding. Um, and now, quite excitingly, we're in a position to, to take on consultants around the country. So starting next month, hopefully, we'll have more presence around the country and, and be able to help more businesses. I've got 35 years' experience in running my own businesses. Uh, three of them, I've, I've got past a million pound in, in, in turnover. Um, so I've, I've accumulated quite vast experience in the, in the SME market um, and how, you know, how to go about running Small businesses, I um, have to say, not, not everything has gone to plan, um, but I've probably learned more when it's not gone to plan than I have when it has. Um, I've invested in a business education to, to back up the experience. I have an MBA, I've got an ILM Level 7 in Leadership and Management, and various other courses. One quite notable course was a six-month business growth course at Warwick University, all of which come in very handy when it when, when we're looking at helping businesses and certainly in, in, uh, in applying for, for grant funding. So I'm independent. I have no links with anyone. I'm also self-funded, so I'm not part of any government organisation. I'm not governed by any boundaries or any restrictions, and I can give good, honest advice, so long as it's legal. I'm not FCA regulated, so if these products are ever required, I have partners who, who can assist in regulated advice and delivery of such products. The reason I started Growth in Business was I was shocked to find out about 15 years ago how much I didn't know. So back around 15 years ago, I, I carried out a project for myself, which was about half a million pound investment. Um, it was in manufacturing, so we were, we were we were coming up with a new method of manufacturing, what was quite a traditional existing product. Uh, we thought we had a better way to do it, so we invested the money. We bought machinery, we bought bespoke machinery, we invested in people, in training. It was a big project for a company of, of our size. And um, so we went through it, we, we, we funded it through our own working capital, and we funded it through through some asset finance deals that we, we had with various providers. Um, we, we took on quite high levels of, of, of debt repayment. Um, the project actually 
didn't work out a plan. We uh, we had to disperse the project. The machinery was dispersed through the factory. Some was sold off. Some of it's still in production today. And we had to repurpose some of it. So it was quite a costly exercise. But knowing what we I know now, we actually could have done a far better job of it um, in term, from a financial perspective anyway. So um, that's what's led me to really to motivate me to... Um, uh, to drive forward with growth in business and, and helping others not fall into the same um, trap that I did. So over the next few minutes together, um, we'll look at some different options when, it's, when you're looking to fund your business. We'll look more specifically at business grants, um, some examples of, of business grants, um, how to find them, and a few tips on, on, on what to do and how to align your business. Um, then we'll just spend a little bit of time exp explaining about R&D tax credits, which are actually a form of state aid, but unlike business grants, they come slightly after the, uh, after the event rather than before the event. So some ways you can fund your business. Um, so we, we use funding sort of quite loosely in terms of quite a collective term. Um, you can go into debt funding or debt finance. You know, you, 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 you've got options from the bank. There's, there's uh, companies like Funding Circle that advertise on the television. You've got startup loans, asset finance. There's all various sorts of, of um, areas. You know, they, they tend to be regulated. Um, as I say, we, we don't really get involved. For us, it's the last resort um, for any client is to, is to get them into any sort of debt. Some, sometimes it's necessary but we'll always try and avoid it. There's things like invoice, invoice discounting, um, not a great expert on it, but, but I've found, I have used it in the past, I found it to be quite expensive, although it can be quite flexible. So um, those are all available to businesses. Um, there's R&D tax credits, which I said we'll, 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 we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, there's capital allowances on building, which can, can provide a cash injection. There's also something that's relatively similar through uh, GDPR, um, which I'm happy to talk to anybody uh, on a one-to-one -one basis about. You know, there's, you can raise funds through directors, loans, family loans, selling equity. Um, and the last one I've got on the list is, is business grants. So that's really what we're here to talk about uh, today. So what I did, I thought I would look on the internet before, before this started and um, and we would, uh, and I'll just come up with a definition. So I found this definition on the internet. Um, so a definition of business grants in its broadest sense, a grant is money given to a person, business, government, or other organization that is designated for a specific purpose, which does not need to be repaid. So I suppose that raises the question, who, who supplies them? Well, you know, a lot of them will come through down through government, uh, central government, or, or traditionally um, European money. Some some people may have heard of ERDF funds, which were European funds. Um, and it's quite interesting when you read uh, read some of the um, strategic plans that are laid out by the um, by local authorities, combined authorities, and, and, and local enterprise partnerships, where you you see how money will, 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 will cascade down to, to actually individual will grant, individual grant funds. Um, this tends to make it quite fragmented and quite difficult to, um, to find these, these, these specific grants, especially when you, when, you, when you need them, and it can be quite a time-consuming exercise. Um, most of them will have to be match funded. So we often get calls saying, I want a grant, um, and people are expecting 100% of any sort of project to, to have, um, to be funded by a grant, which is not, it's not the case. So we always say to anybody that comes on, you really need to, to have a, a specific pro project for us to look at. And, um, and you know we can then try and match you with a grant. I think some of the one, some of the grants that are available, like the ten thousand pound grants um, through COVID, where you were, you know if you claim a small business rates relief, you could claim this money off the local authority. They they did give a slight false impression. Um, 
obviously there were a benefit to a lot of businesses, but but it did give a false impression to 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 moving forward what 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 would be required. So so match funding is definitely I'd say pretty much definitely a part of of any sort of thought process that you're going to have with business grants. You're going to have to have some form of qualification criteria. You know, do you have a project? What is the project? You know, you've got to align it to what the fund is required. You know, there, there can be quite stringent um, criteria attached to um, to a fund. Um, quite often, again, we will get people come on to us and they'll, they'll want to apply for it. But when you actually sit down with them and you spend 20, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour talking um, and going through the criteria, actually the realisation hits that, that, that basically they're, they're, they're not going to uh, qualify anyway. So, um, you know, so, so really it is worth spending a little bit of time reading about the, the um, qualification criteria. Um, they can be quite area specific. Um, if we go back to what we just said earlier about the, the local enterprise partnerships and the combined authorities that come up with these strategic plans, you know, they will differ from area to area. So we could look for a grant for a company in, say, Birmingham, for example, where I do know that, you know, they, 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 they want to stimulate the, the sort of the creative sector of the economy. You may go to, to um, another area where they want to stimulate manufacturing, say, for example, because they're, they're not so big on, on, on the creative side. So, or, or there may be a more rural economy. So you quite often find that, um, that, you know, what grant is available in one specific area is not necessarily available in another. Um, and we go back to, you know, you've got qualification and the eligibility criteria. Not all grants are available for, for all industry sectors. So, so you, you will have some industry sectors that, um, that will be excluded. Um, and re re retail is one that, that often springs to mind where, um, where they can be excluded from some of these ones. Sometimes also the financial sector. Um, so, some examples of business grants. Uh, grants can cover a multitude of areas. Um, and and uh, we, as we said earlier, you, you sort of need a project. You need a project to focus on. Um, so your project could be purchasing some form of capital equipment. That could be machinery, it could be computers, could be desks, so, something around that, around those areas. They're generally a match funded grant um, and would probably lead to some form of job creation. You, there are, there are low, low carbon grants. So, you know, a big push is obviously for businesses to lower their carbon emissions. So, so from area to area, there are specific grants available for um, initiatives to, to lower, lower carbon emissions. Um, premises, again, we touched on that earlier. So, Premises repairs, alterations, never buying premises, but, 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 but repairing them, altering them. Uh, again, generally probably leading to some form of job creation. New market development, new product development, um, and some form of in innovation um, and R&D, but that's not getting confused with, with R&D tax credits. Um, and training and employment. You know, I'm, I imagine a lot of business owners will have heard of Kickstart, um, the Kickstart scheme, apprenticeships, and uh, an upskilling of of, um, of existing staff into, into new areas, and a big push on digital at the moment. Um, I've got a, a list here of of grants. I, I get one every week of, of grants to come. I just picked out a couple here. Um, one of them is a, an ad, ad smart SME support scheme where, where, where there's support for 100 small UK businesses that want to get into TV advertising. So, you know, these grants can be sometimes quite obscure, but, but obviously with that, there's is more probably of a competition, so you're going to have to qualify. There's a, one that came out, an update on a, a circular economy fund for manufacturers in Wales to transition towards the, the circular economy. Um, and a, a digital growth program in Leicestershire, um, which is which is 
based on, on, on upskilling and training through workshops and seminars in the Leicester and Leicestershire area in, in the area of digital. So there's all sorts of grants going on there. I mean, this, this, this report here is eight pages long, but you know, we, we also deal with non-for-profits. So you'll find the non-for-profit sector has quite a, quite a substantial amount of grants available to them, um, probably more so than the, the business side. So how, how do you find out what grants are available? And, 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 and for a lot of people, that, that is the biggest problem. Because the market is so fragmented, you know, it, it's very difficult to say any one particular place where to look for, for grants. So going back to what we said earlier, you know, how, how do you not miss out? Um, and really, my advice there is to, to look in your local area, into your local council, your, 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 your um, local enterprise partnership, your local growth hub, maybe your local chamber, any organisation like that that operates locally. I would subscribe to their newsletter. They, they, will, they are more than likely, if you, if you continually read their newsletter, then you um, you locally have a good idea on, on, on what help and, and support is available. Um, if you then look out into your wider industry sector, just to give you a couple of examples, if you are, say, a creative business, you might want to subscribe to a newsletter through the, the Arts Council, um, for example. That will give you all you know, a, a good idea, a good flavour of what support is out there for the arts. If you're a, a learning um, digital learning, there's, there's a um, there's an organisation called UFI Bot Tech, um, which again um, concentrates on funding for digital learning. So that you know you can again subscribe to their newsletter and and be kept up to date. So the advice really would be to to to, to look locally, find out and subscribe to all the newsletters you can on that, and also then to look on your industry sector and subscribe to newsletters on that. And then through time, you know, you, you will be kept up to date with what, uh, what is available and then hopefully you, you won't miss out. The other alternative, and that's where organisations like ourselves come in, is we have a thing up there, it's harder than it looks, which says grantsandfunding.co.uk. And that will give you all the information you need to know. Well, I won't go into it now, but all the information you need to know about how we can keep you in touch um, with grants, um, grants and funding um, that are available for your specific business and industry sector. So that's on a, either a national basis or a, a, a local basis. So we are able to do that job for you. And that really just, just takes the time element away from, um, from the process for you. So I've just broken down a few tips here really to try and help make sure that you, you are kept aware. So to make sure you're aware, we've just been through to make sure you're aware of what's available for your business. Um, if we if we just did what we just spoke about there. Um, and I have to say that that you know if you've got a specific project coming up, then that can be a great ROI, um, either an investment in your time or money um, in terms of what you could get back from doing that. So, um, so that, that really can be a very positive, um, positive exercise to, to carry out. So once you've got this information, um, my advice to you would be to think ahead. You know, a lot of people that come to us really don't have a business plan. They will come to a point in their, in their journey where they decide they're going to need to make an investment. Now, if you, can, if you can roughly predict that investment, so sitting down at the start of a year and work out a plan that maybe in November you might need to buy this machine or you might need to do this particular activity, then you can be aware and you can try and plan around that for what grants could be or are available and it might be that if you get a notification that something comes up in two months before that that, that you could bring your your plans forward slightly and actually make them far more far more cost effective for you so always worth planning ahead so once you've got the information you've planned ahead 
Um, and then make sure what match funding is required, because sometimes you have to prove ahead of time about what funding that you do actually have. So in that instance, you might need to, to, to make plans for how are you going to get this match funding in, into, your, into your business. So that, that can take a little bit of time. And those people that, that leave these type of things to the last minute haven't got time to, to, to make that consideration and, 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 and make the appropriate arrangements. Um, I would also then make sure you read the small print and you fit the criteria. Because like I say, you know, so many times people will come to us and they'll, they'll want to apply for a grant. And, and if they were to take it upon themselves to do it, I mean, we would always look first and we would always do our due diligence first before we'd ever enter into something like that. But, you know, if you're doing that off of your own back, you know, you could go through all of that, um, all of that effort. And, and it is considerable effort at times. Um, and you never have qualified in the first place. So uh, it's really good to, to, to read the small print and, and make sure you do fit the criteria. Um, to make sure you apply in good time. Uh, as I said before, you know, leaving this the last minute is not the wisest thing to do in this sense. You know, you, you end up putting quite a weak application together. You, you can't do the necessary research. You possibly don't get uh, all the supporting documentation, which, which could be sort of past accounts, forward cash flows, all of that sort of thing, um, which, which may well be required for you to support your, your application. Um, and this, as I said before, could, be, could take longer than the actual application itself. Um, and a final point really is to, um, is to read the questions in the application form. You know, when you're when you're writing, uh, actually provide the information that that the funder wants to hear, not 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 the information that you think you want to give. So, you know, we, we've we've had applications sent to us in the past where people haven't got the funding. And when you when you read read the application form, you know, either they they wanted. A reasonable explanation so if they i think really the clue is if they want three five hundred words don't write a sentence of 25 words for example because you'll never you'll never cover the detail that is required and and when you do answer stick to the the points that they want to hear um you know if you if you, if you do look through the, the forms as a whole generally they're quite logical and they will they will follow some form of a, a, a logical sequence and um but do answer the, the questions that they, they want. So there's about half a dozen sort of pointers really um, if you are to, if you want to apply for any, any form of business grants. So said at the start, just touch on R&D tax credits. And, and the reason for touching on the, those are they, they are actually state aid. So, you know, like grants, you know, they, they, they are, uh, they, they, they are a benefit to, to a business. Um, the, di the difference between R&D tax credits and, and state A and, and, and business grants is, is the fact that R&D tax credits come after the event. So a business grant you would apply for before you entered into a project, R&D is, is, is a way of claiming tax credits back for the uncertainties of that, of that project. So there's I'm not really going to go through all of the, the ins and outs of, of the uh, criteria, but really you, you, you know, just briefly, you, you, for those that don't know, you, you need to be a, um, a UK-based limited company. Uh, you would need to be trading for over a year because basically you need to look at the accounts that, that, that have been produced to, to extract the costings for, 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 for the R&D element. Um, you need to be experienced in your field. So that, that can be through a qualification or, or, or expertise. So you need to be connected really to the, the project that you're undertaking. Yeah, the, the, the project can be a new, a new product or a, a significant enhancement of a product, or it could be the same um, for a process. 
uh, but the, the, the big thing is that, that there has to be an element of uncertainty, otherwise you aren't going to be um, undertaking any sort of research and development. Um, and, you know, once you've done some research, the, 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 the information shouldn't really be readily available for you, because otherwise you could, should just be sort of copying other people. So this is, this is an advancement in, in science and technology, if they would say, um, that is actually going to leave some form of a lasting legacy behind. Whether you share that or you keep it yourself, well, that's that's up to you guys. But um, you know, basically you are you are you are entering into that into that unknown under the criteria. So if anybody wants to talk further about that, we do do that sort of thing. We, we can offer that service uh, where we we differentiate ourselves slightly that we do a fixed fee. We just charge you for the report where some people will, will actually want to take a percentage of, of, of your, your claim. We just do a fixed fee. So we can do that. So please, obviously, using the details above, very, very happy to, to talk to anybody about that. Um, so really, I just wanted to say thanks for listening. Um, I hope you found this of some use anyway. I really hope you did. Um, if anybody has any specific questions, nothing's come through on, on, the, uh, on the email, but if, if any, anybody has, um, wants to ask any specific questions, then please do contact me, um, Karen Lee, uh, email or, or phone. Very happy to have a chat. I'm very happy to spend half an hour, 45 minutes with anybody just talking specifically about their business, what, what projects they've got coming up and how how they could best consider to be funded. As I say, the best thing to do on that is just to book in, in, in Calendly and um, we'll just see how we can help you and give you, you know, maximum efficiency on the financial side of your business. So just to say thanks for listening. I do hope you've managed to gain some insight into grants and funding and how you could use them for your business. So I'll leave you with it. So thank you very much. Goodbye.